Whether you're fly fishing in a stream, getting those ankles wet, or deep in the ocean casting nets, fish nerds, fish nerds, fish nerds, it's a podcast. Hello and welcome to the Fish Nerds, the show about fish, fishing, and eating fish. I'm Clay Gross, Chief Executive Fish Nerd, Licensed Fishing Guide, and your best friend. Co-hosting with me tonight is the crappy hippie John King. Hello, John. Hey, Clay. Hey, Angie. How's it going, everybody? I, I haven't even said Angie's name yet. So, and, I, I, and our I get special to guest, <laughs> our special guest tonight is Angie Scott, host of the Women Angler and Adventure podcast. We're going to get into that in a second, but today on the show, we're going to talk about her show. We're going to talk about the rapid rise in female angling, uh, which we hope there's a rapid, li- help rapid rise of. Uh, we're going to do the news with Dave Callum. He's back as our news guy. We're going to talk about pontoon boat fishing. John's got a surprise for us. And of course, we have no idea. Something else might also happen. Angie Scott, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited to be on your show. I've been uh, aware of your show for a number of years. Uh, so kudos to you for keeping it going for so long. Oh, yeah. I don't know how to quit. So. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, he does not know how to quit or when to quit. But yeah. we're all real happy for that. We jumped the shark in the first year, so I didn't even notice. I just kept going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've been, I've, been, I've been on your website doing a little tooling around and stuff, and it struck me one of the things I really like is that you've got this kind of core belief system that mm-hmm. you kind of run your show with and you kind of live your life by, and I really liked it. And it was uh, women deserve to be better represented in the fishing and outdoor industry. I'm going to check those off. I agree with that. We are better together. Check. I guess we as a women, is that what that means? Right. Yeah. If we yeah. all stick together rather than fight against each other, you know, well, I'm we're with you there. there too. Yep. Uh, if she can do it, you can do it. Uh, we should enjoy the outdoors five days and work too. check, 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 yeah. check. Always leave it better than you found it. Absolutely. America is beautiful. Let's restore it. We should restore what's been lost and improve what hasn't and respect the fish totally with you on all counts. So anyway, awesome. welcome. Let's talk about uh, how you got started, Angie. Yeah, so uh, originally I'm from Minnesota, so just really a brief background on me. I grew up fishing up there, you know, landed 10,000 lakes and all that. Uh, but I had a couple passions, and so I kind of had to decide which route I was going to take. Was I going to go into somehow in the outdoors, like maybe work for the DNR or something like that? Or was I going to go a totally different direction and follow my passion for music? And so ultimately I decided to go the music route. And so that brought me down to Nashville, Tennessee there's some music business schools down here and if you want to get your foot in the door in the music business really highly competitive industry it helps to go to a music business school get a music business degree uh, do some internships that sort of thing so that's the path I took and I got a job in the music industry down here in Nashville right after I graduated college did that for a few years um, kind of part of my passion for the music industry was songwriting and so I over the years would write songs off and on and I discovered this thing called podcasts and so I was like is there such a thing as um, songwriting podcasts and so I kind of was listening to this one and um, they were quitting they they weren't going to continue the show so I decided to uh, uh, you know well, I shouldn't say that. So somebody else reached out to me and said, hey, I'm, I'm going to start a songwriting podcast. I know we had communicated because we were both fans of this other show. And he said, I, I can't do it by myself. I need a co-host. Would you be interested? And I was like, man, that sounds really scary. I've never I've thought of myself as having a radio voice. Uh, let's do it. <laughs> that's kind That's of my so attitude like if something yep. scares the crap out of me you know what I at least got to try it once and see uh, I had to do it under an assumed name because I didn't want to get have any conflicts of interest with my day oh, please job tell me please tell me your assumed name <laughs> so my middle name is Marie so simple mm-hmm. enough I went by Marie my last name at the time um, my maiden name is Peralt and so I just kind of that's also a hard name to say so I went with Marie Perry it was actually called the commercials suicide 
songwriting podcast. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't come up with that. That was my co-host or my. That's a good name. It's a, <laughs> right so on. we did that for a while, um, and again, that just got me really in, into the podcasting thing. Uh, got to be too much for me at one point, just with um, the day job and also songwriting and all of that. And then I got into boating, which you know we can talk about that as well. Um, pontoons. We'll talk about that later. But oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so. Few, fast forward a few years, um, uh, I can kind of tell that my my position at this company was going to be kind of phased out just with technology advances and things like that. And I started thinking, all right, what's, you know, and I've done it for a long time now. It was about 15, 16 years at that point. I'm like, what could I do? What am I passionate about? And at that point, it's being out on the water. It's fishing. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start a podcast about that and see if maybe I can build that up into something. And then when this position goes away, I'll already have something to fall back on. Um, so didn't quite work out that way. As you know, you don't really make bank in podcasting, at and least. People are shocked that you don't make a living <laughs> podcast. <laughs> and so my position did go away as I predicted, but um, I, you know, I had a little bit of time to focus and build. And so now I've also started a charter business uh, with my pontoon. So I have a deal. Um, that's one thing that came out of the podcast is I have a demo deal with my local dealer uh, here in, in Nash, outside of Nashville, Anderson Marine, and Quest Pontoons, um, who I've ha had a good relationship with for a few years. They're who I bought my first pontoon with and designed it and everything. And so they're uh, giving me a demo pontoon to to take people out on, which is well, actually a tritune. Damn um, it! Uh, <laughs> like I, I I bought a stupid boat. I could I didn't even think to ask. Hey, can I have a boat? <laughs> yeah. So, so I get to use it for the year and then show it off and um and then Give it back. hopefully do it again the next year. So but you don't have to do the maintenance. You don't have to store it. You don't. Oh my God. You're well, I keep it. I do have a slip for it here at the marina, and I I keep it up on a lift so be you know up Fancy. out of the water but uh yeah so that that's worked out really well and then just through kind of doing stuff with the podcast at the nashville boat show this past january i ran into freedom boat club and so over the years i have got my captain's license because um, mm -hmm. i want to do charters the right way uh, and be properly insured and all of that so i got my captain's license and they're looking for licensed captains to do their new member trainings and then with COVID and the, the, the boat getting delayed due to manufacturing being shut down, I've kind of been able to fill up all this time with doing new member trainings for Freedom Boat Club. So oh, that's are, amazing. Are, yeah. That's amazing. So, now, so are, interestingly is in New Hampshire to run a charter service in freshwater inland waters, you don't need a captain's license. You need a commercial operator license. Okay. Which is, a, I think, a less intense uh, program than the than the than the it's a U.S. Coast Guard captain's license you're talking about. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. less intense than that, but you still have to have a commercial license and be insured. So like I'm a commercial operator, licensed and insured, legal to have my business. Right. But uh, I would love to get my captain's license. That's kind of like because I don't I don't let people call me captain because I haven't earned that earn that it's weird to be called captain when you have done and the you know it's that. funny that's that's one thing I found so as part of being the kind of the head captain at freedom boat club nashville i'm trying to find other captains to help share the load so there's not a lot in our area um i found a one guy i knew through the coast guard auxiliary i volunteered for them for a couple years and um so i brought him on and he's been awesome but uh when i've been kind of researching i find out you know i'm Googling and trying to find other guides and stuff in the area that advertise themselves as captains and finding they're out they, they're not actually nope. licensed captains. Yeah, and very so, few, very few yeah. in, inland waters are licensed right. captains. They are sometimes legal to do the business, but. Well, they just have the nickname captain, you know, captain, yeah. you know, Stumpy yeah. Smith. Yeah. Well, yeah. maybe they spell You're not it really different. a real captain, though, right? Maybe it's like C A P N. Yeah, we got a guy on our dock. Everybody calls him Captain Paul, oh. but he doesn't have his captain's license. Yeah, no, I don't. I, I always feel like if you're gonna have the title, you got to earn the title. You can't just make it up. Like, right. like I, like I'm Chief Executive Fishner. We made that up. I didn't earn it. Uh. So well, I've earned it now, seven years in. But I didn't right. start off with it. I, I actually, Dave Kellum, my my original founder, started off with that, and I was Chief um, 
what did he call me? It was chief promotion officer or something like that. I don't know. Some made up crap. It's all made up. John, right. what's up? Oh, I don't know. I just, I, that was uh, awesome. I just, you know, we're real big on just taking the plunge. Um, uh, it usually starts with, you know, uh, anything I'm afraid of. It starts out with here, hold my beer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about running a fishing charter on a pontoon boat. What a terrible idea. Who does this? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like, I don't understand why you wouldn't fish from a pontoon boat, honestly, because it's just such a nice, stable platform. You've got so much room, um, so you can bring families out. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not all cramped in and getting tangled up in each other's lines. You know, you've got... Uh, you've got that bimini for shade. So if it's really hot day, you're not just out there in the sweltering heat. Um, you know, they've got trolling motors. So it's like, I don't understand why you wouldn't. It's, it really is the easy. Let's roll back to that charter service. So you started off this fishing charter service when? Um, so really last year, I kind of started just dabbling in it. And honest, quite honestly, I do more recreational charters just taking people out on the lake and hanging out than i actually do fishing <laughs> which is easier um, it's easier it's less <laughs> pressure yeah. uh so really i just kind of did it here and there to get my feet wet last sure. year so and let's let's you're in tennessee right yep all right so tell me in tennessee what's required to be a charter fishing charter captain besides the captain's license we know that already you got to have what is required? Is, is that required it, even? So not on all the bodies of water. So only if it's a navigable body of water, like we've got Old Hickory uh, just north of Nashville that's on the Cumberland River. And since on the Cumberland River, you can get to the Mississippi, you can, you know, you can basically do uh, the Great Loop um, mm -hmm. through the Cumberland River. You have to have your captain's license to do charters on that lake. I'm sure there's a lot of people that try to get away with it without. Sure. So, captain's license, and then uh, to be a guide, are you required to have special licensing for that? You should have a guide license. Should yes. or have to have? Uh, well, have to have. Have like to have. If, yeah. Well, okay, so it's not like Kansas where you just write, I'm a guide and Sharpie on your shirt, <laughs> and bam, you're a guide. No, that's great. So, yeah. what's the process to get the license in Tennessee? So it's actually, from what I understand, it's fairly new so that you haven't in the past. So you don't until, have it? I don't have mine right now. No. Oh, okay. And I've Breaking not been, law. well, I've not been doing any charters <laughs> uh, because my boat uh, just got delivered uh, uh -huh. last week. So I'm actually picking up on Saturday. So nice. I had, so once before I do any actual fishing guide charters, I'll have to get that. And I think it's just an application and then a, a monetary, small monetary fee. That, that sounds delightful. New Hampshire <laughs> and Maine are the two hardest states in the country to get your guide permits in. Really? And both states require a 100-question uh, written test and an oral board in front of like these really macho, big, tough fishing game officers. And they, they run you through, you have to be an expert map and compass, you have to be an expert at rescue, like like search and rescue in the, in the mountains, oh, even wow. if you're boating. And it's just incredibly difficult. So I always am a little jealous of states where it's less hoops to jump through. There's only 80 guides in the whole state of New Hampshire because most people fail the test and just say, screw it, I'm not going to bother with it. Wow. So, well, 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 that's good for you then, right? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but at least you get to – now, do they send you the nifty shirt and patch, or do you got to create your own, Clay? Uh, the patches I have to buy, uh, but you can only buy them if you've got your guide license, and they're only a dollar a piece. They're cheap. Oh, okay. so, oh and well, yeah. a really funny kind of a side story. <laughs> I've been spending forever trying to get it on my hat. See, I got my license there on my hat, and I gave it to my daughter. I'm like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to sew this guide patch on my hat, and she, and she looks at it and, and she goes, I'll be right back. And she grabs an iron, and it iron, they're iron on patches. <laughs> 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 a couple of things. Um, you say you store your uh, boat at the slip at the lake, and then you're over there in the other slip, right? Because you live on a houseboat. Yeah, so I've got a 66-foot houseboat. On That's the huge. Yeah. Yeah. That's and huge. I stay out there all the time. I do have a house, but I love staying on the houseboat as much as possible. Uh, I just love being on the water. So, um, so actually, I've got another houseboat in between, and then I've got my pontoons so I've got the big, big one and a lift for the big one. And then my little one is next to it. So pretty convenient. You are living the dream. That, Perfect. And that's the name of my houseboat. Living oh. the dream. Well, <laughs> appropriate, appropriate. Okay. So 
getting back to the the, the charters, uh, we're we're kind of dancing around the the cool stuff. Um, karaoke charters. So does your boat have hookups for the lights and the mics and the the dance floor and the whole uh, so, <laughs> so uh, you know, set up like that? So I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, and it's like the number one. It's like the bachelorette capital of the world. I'm moving. Bachelorette party. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so I'm like, you know, one of, what's going to draw those kind of people that just want to go out on the lake and have a good time and have a sober skipper to take them out and they don't have to worry about renting a pontoon, having somebody to drive it and all that. So I came up with this idea pontoon karaoke um so basically it's a pretty simple setup i'm using my podcast mics believe it or not so my atr 2100 and uh so they're wired unfortunately but um so they're not wireless but they i bought this little adapter you plug it into that it goes into your iphone so you use like an app called Carafun or some other karaoke app. That's cool. I didn't think about that. So I might steal some of your ideas just so we're clear. Anything you say here may be stolen from you. <laughs> we need a non-disclosure <laughs> agreement. I signed nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. well, it's, you're, you're in a great niche there. I do the same thing that you're doing. I, have, I do fishing, but, but actually about last summer, about half my clients just want boat rides. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've had a few clients, actually one specifically, who was about to buy a boat. Rich guy, retired, was about to buy a boat. He met me and thought, why buy a boat? I can just, you're my boat. <laughs> and now I take him out every two weeks. He prepaid for the entire, like eight cruises already prepaid in advance gotcha. for all his dates. And it's just terrific. So it's a lot of money. Do you have a drill on your boat? Uh, uh, I I have one on the little one um, so that I could take that mount off and put it mounted on the bigger one if I wanted to. Kind of a little nerd since it's a demo boat. I don't really want to mess you with that too much. That, but right. <laughs> uh, but one tricky thing you asked about like requirements. Um, so this particular lake, it's not navigable. It's managed by the Corps of Engineers. So you do have to, um, I have to have a sublease agreement with them in order to do business on this lake. Uh, so again, I think there's a lot of people out here that get away with it with not having that. So I actually have to give the Corps of Engineers 4%. Yeah, of- that's how a national forest in New Hampshire is. If you want a guide in national forest, you pay them, I think it's 7%. Okay. Yeah, and then, but it's all, uh, it's all self-report. You have to just tell them what you made and you pay them yourself. Right. No yeah, checking. right. So. And then since I've got my boat moored at this marina, I also have to pay the, I have a sublease agreement with the marina um, to do business with a boat here. So I have to pay them 10%. So that's a pretty big chunk that, that it's goes like, away. Yeah, it's almost 15% yeah. of your money before you even get on the water. Exactly. Yeah, Ouch. so that's that's something to consider. So, you know, I might not do a ton this year, but, um, you know, I've got the Freedom Boat Club thing to keep me afloat as well. So, yeah, I just applied for a state grant for money's lost because of COVID-19 mm-hmm. because I am uncomfortable with guiding during this pandemic because, you know, as you know, guiding, you touch people's hands a lot, right? Right. Go mm-hmm. close to them. But on a boat ride, I can sit in my captain seat and handle it. But I'm, I'm concerned about the, the, um, about guiding with COVID. Have you any, how do you handle this? How are you handling COVID-19? Well, so at first, you know, everybody was a little bit more cautious, um, especially when we first opened up. So we wore masks and um, even out on the boat. Uh, But you know, we're, we're doing our trainings on a giant pontoon boat. So mm-hmm. we're, we're pretty distanced anyways. And I'm just kind of talking through commands. So I kind of got to the point where I was asking the customer or the member, are you comfortable? Do you want to wear a mask? If you do, you know, I'll wear, I'll wear one, you know, and most, um, no, actually I didn't have anyone that said, I, yeah, I need, well, let's wear masks. Yeah. So and you're outside, you know, there's, I don't know. It's a lower risk, uh, much lower risk outside than inside. And they say the virus is time spent with it inside is is the Mm -hmm. most dangerous. What I do is I wear a buff around Mm -hmm. my neck. And if I have to get near someone, for whatever reason, I just pull it up for a second, get near them, drop it down back to my seat yep. by the way so the the biggest be problem as respectful as i can yeah the biggest problem i had the first few trainings we did and we were wearing the masks was my sunglasses fogging up and i couldn't see <laughs> i'm like what's more dangerous not being able to see while you're driving a boat or <laughs> i don't know <laughs> that depends on how old you are so do you how do you mitigate the fog did you put like shaving cream in them and wash them out or how do you spit in them I just kind of have to move them away from yeah. my face and kind of let them air out a little bit, you know. Yeah, a lot of little tricks there. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, but it's not been it's not been too bad. And the other the other thing we do have a classroom training that we take people through. So what I did is I put it I did it, put together a PowerPoint for that, and we were doing them via Zoom, Better. which which works so well that we're continuing to do that. And now I'm just de- designing it into an online course, so that's going to save me several hours a week. So. So through Airbnb's app, you can be an excursion, right? But if you have a boat and you want to be an excursion, even though I'm legal to operate in New Hampshire, uh, Airbnb's excursion on their app will not accept my boating business unless I have a captain's license. Yep, so I'm, that- I'm eliminated from that pot of money because I don't have that license. So that's my next kind of like get that paper. That's, that's what I did. That's the only way I did a few charters last year was through Airbnb. So you know. And- <laughs> and but they take twenty percent. Just charge more, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, but and the problem with Airbnb that I ran into was it's per person. You can't set it up to be oh. like, um, okay, you can't set it up to be like it's six hundred dollars for a full day, uh, up to so many people. Mm-hmm. It has to be. So if one person books for like whatever, I have a four hour charter. If one person books for a hundred bucks, I still got to go out for a four hour charter just you for that just one You can't just tell person. me you sold out. Sorry. Mm. Gross. Yeah. So that's the problem I had with mm. working there. And did you have system. that? Did, did, did you have a one person charter? I never did. Bucks? And that would probably be rare, you know? Yeah. Cause I won't step on my boat for less than $200. Like I just, and so that's, that's yeah. where I was at too. So, uh, Unless the John least King's on the boat, then I'll go for nothing. Well, I just want to roll back oh, to make sure myself and and the audience is is you know we're talking about uh freedom boat club and this is a training course on how to become a pontoon boat operator any kind of boat so a any freedom, kind of boat freedom boat club we've got wake wake surf boats ski boats um uh, deck boats all all kinds of stuff so okay now is this in, just for if you want to go pro or is this something that people just take take so they they know what they're doing yeah we want everybody to be as safe as possible so we make sure every member goes through this training before they can start reserving boats well it just sounds like such a fantastic idea because uh it's kind of like the parking lot thing you know people get in parking lots and no stop sign, no speed limit sign. I guess I can do what I want, you know, same with boats. You know, it's like, wow, I'm, I'm in a boat. I can, yeah. you know, I can act like a jackass and it's just, you know, fine with everybody. And it's like, no, it's not. <laughs> you and, know. and especially now, because after COVID, I don't know if it's the same thing up there, but our on the weekends, it's a zoo out on the water here. Well, both the lakes you're talking about, an Old Hickory and Percy Priest. Percy Priest is they're right there by Nashville. Mm-hmm. So um, that's got to get busy quick. Yeah, I could imagine. Oh yeah. It's, I mean, besides yeah. the fact that you've got like a billion tourists there, Nashville's a fairly large city in and of itself. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. You'll, the 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 marinas have these big rental pontoons that are built like tanks and you know they got the the upper deck and the slide and you'll see just a fleet of them leaving the marina in the morning on a saturday morning you know and it's just like full of people whatever the limit is they're full to the limit of all those people heading out just to have a good time out on the water for the day so it's it's crazy <laughs> it sounds crazy. And, and Percy Priest, I've heard of that. It, it's pretty good Bass Lake, isn't it? Haven't they had some serious tournaments there and so on? They have actually the second ever, I think it was the second ever Bassmaster Classic was on Percy Priest right after it got built. So that was kind of interesting. The way they did it back then, it was like a big secret. So the anglers didn't even know where they were going until they got there. And so nobody knew. And then they already had a fleet of boats that were all the same, had all the same equipment on them that they had to use. And so I saw a video uh, that was actually on Percy Priest out of my marina. Um, So that was kind of neat to see way back then. But um, uh, so there are a lot of tournaments out here, uh, you know, almost daily. And so there's a lot of pressure. And so that it's kind of a hard lake to fish because these, okay. you know, there's just so much going on all the time. Well, I think and people that, should know too, that like when you're describing a big lake, you're describing a 42 mile long lake. Like that's, we don't, I don't know if I, where, where you are, where most people listeners are, I don't, I don't know lakes that big. Like 42 miles is monster. 
And it's 42 <laughs> miles, but it's also a river. So there's certain parts you can't really get to because it gets so shallow. Um, the Stones River is what feeds it, and it's not a very big river. Um, so, uh, you know, it's a big lake, yes, but there's not that much accessible water. Um, you know mm, okay and it's a and it's a man-made lake through damming it right so exactly yeah yeah and he, 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 he you don't have to listen to him he, he's always sneaking that in on us especially me out here in kansas we're all artificial reservoirs clay just always got to get that in there it, uh yeah that lake I you would... fish on john it, it's a, it's a fake lake isn't it it's, it's, <laughs> a, it, it, it hasn't been there since time immemorial like uh, our lakes here in uh, new hampshire that are so we have we have glacial beautiful lakes i'm sorry <laughs> they, they, he's, he's justifiably proud they are spectacular <laughs> so but in in your in your in percy priest lake fish listed on the website for, for the visitors information centers, striped bass. You have landlocked striped bass, which I My would favorite. love to go catch. I love them. Largemouth, smallmouth, white bass, which is a uh, temperate bass like a striper. John loves those. Cherokee bass, which I've never heard of. What's a Cherokee bass? I actually don't know. <laughs> I've not. I've not. If if I've caught a Cherokee bass, I didn't know, know it was a Cherokee bass. I guess it's just a different strain. You know, like you got your Florida strain, so maybe uh -huh. yeah, Cherokee strain. I, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not educated on that. <laughs> uh, no, oh, actually, Cherokee bass is in the temperate bass family, like a white bass. So it's oh, okay. Oh, it is not a sunfish like a largemouth bass. Uh, so then you have sunfish, catfish, crappie, bluegill, trout. What's your favorite? So if I had my druthers, I would target striper just because mm -hmm. they're the hardest fighting, meanest fish in this lake. Are you and trolling or are you casting? So I've done it both ways. Um, so trolling would be my preference. The problem is you, if you want to really have success, you need to catch your own shad. So cast that cast net catch catch your shad there's only a couple places on this lake where you can really get into some good shad so you mm -hmm. almost need to catch it somewhere else um <laughs> you can't buy them in the bait stores oh no and then then you got to keep them alive so that's the next big cha good, challenge good luck with that <laughs> yeah. so then you got to have a nice round aerated bait tank you know that they're not going to be running their noses in the corners and and you know all that plus it gets really hot so you got to make sure they're the right temperature so they don't get too hot and die yeah. so there's there's just so and then the, I, the guide i took out he had downriggers um and the whole deal so it's it's a lot more complicated so now i fished them just in the, certain times of year like uh coming into the spring here you you would get just these frenzies of striper and hybrids really mostly mm -hmm. um up on the surface just going crazy so you look for the birds and then you run over there really quick and you start just throwing uh, spoons or whatever and you're just catching but they're not going to be big you know typically they're just kind of a smaller size but they still fight really hard and that's fun when you can get into a good size school of those it's so. crazy fun it's crazy fun i only have the white bass equivalent to talk about uh, -huh. uh but yeah that is crazy fun i want to jump back to the shad thing because clay i uh, had a fellow on the show or, or was in fish in the news i had a little robot doohickey that you stuck down inside the bait oh yeah uh, zomb zombait the zombait that's it yeah i wonder if zombait would help uh eliminate uh yeah. this need for these fresh live shad because i'm telling you you know it's like jeff donaldson says you look at a shad and it, wrong and it's just gonna go <laughs> you know uh -huh. so. well Andrew, you nailed it talking about the round tanks shad have to swim in circles or they mm -hmm. die right. and, and so the, the a square tank kills shad Clay drew that circle on the foredeck on his, his pontoon boat, and he tells me to stay inside that circle, and now I know why, so I, I don't end up nosed in the corner and yeah. uh, <laughs> banging my head on something. i got to um, keep you safe, John. Uh, you, you're a prince, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> I do. Um, Kansas has great fishing for nothing, mediocre fishing for most things and <laughs> it kind of goes down from there so i'm always proud to be a fisher here because it's challenging ah. all right let's let, let's take a break and jump in with dave callum and fish in the news 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 fish in the news everybody loves their fish in the news 
All right, it's time for Fish in the News, and we're super lucky because Dave Kellum is back. Dave, how are you? I'm back. Yes, I'm I'm doing well, surprisingly. I know. I feel like it's been seconds since I've seen you. <laughs> time is but an illusion, sir. Is indeed. You been doing any fishing lately? Uh, I did. I caught the first striper for me this season. I've caught almost no fish this season in open water. I've <laughs> been struggling. Oh yeah, they yeah, I, and just because the the estuaries are filling up with stripers right now, it was I was able to do that. But um, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I mean, well, we went out on Sunday with my kids on the pontoon boat, and we plucked away at my, my kids caught like twenty big yellow perch each, but they didn't let me hold my fishing rods. They just they kept all the equipment and they let me unhook their fish for them. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's thoughtful. Sweet. Yeah, it's sweet. <laughs> but I have a, I, I've been, I, I bought a nine and a half inch, a nine and a half inch, nine and a half foot crappie rod with a real combo, not just the pole. And it's really fun to catch yellow perch on, on a rod that long and thin. It just bends over like crazy and it's a blast. So, well, do you remember that noodle rod that I had? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I suppose it's probably in that family. Yeah, totally fun. Yeah, totally fine. You know what I I found recently? So my house has a uh, carpenter bee problem. Well, you, what are they building? Oh, no, they 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 really should be. Um, <laughs> the problem is they're useless. <laughs> they really should be deconstruction bees, is what they should be called. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they bore holes in the side of our house, God. and uh, I know, and uh, they're really interesting though. So the the males defend their territory really aggressively. Mm -hmm. and uh are you familiar with them yeah, oh yeah 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 big and old like they're like murder ants <laughs> they are <laughs> huge but do you know the male you know how to tell the males from the females uh they're rowdy they push each other around yeah yeah um also the males have a big yellow dot on their face really yes it's and the next time you're around look oh because the males i mean it's a big yellow dot it's and like obvious it's so obvious. It's it's one of those things that they probably don't know they have it. And, mm -hmm. you know, somebody be like, hey, bro, bro, you got something right here, yeah. right here. Um, but um, the neat thing is the males don't have stingers, so they cannot hurt you. Wow. Do, do the females have stingers? Yes, they do. They do? Yes. I, I've never been stung by one. I've always just kind of like, I've eaten a few of them, but I've never been stung by any of them. You've, you've eaten carpenter bees. Ants. The big ants with the wings. I'm sorry. Did I say ants? Yeah. I'm sorry. Carpenter bees. I don't know carpenter bees. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm thinking of those big giant flying ants that are everywhere. Oh, yeah. No, I know those. And they yeah. do eat my house, too. Yeah. But you can eat them. Yes, you can. So you just tell them. Just warn them. You know, right. Like, you just pick one up and go tell your friends. <laughs> you know, they make one watch, one another one watch while you eat his friend and then... Then they go back to the colony and they go, this guy eats us. We're going to go and they go to your neighbor's vegan house. Right. <laughs> right. And go with that. Yeah. So very good. I'm sorry. I thought I, I should have said carpenter bees. God, Just that's what be... age does to you, man. I know. God damn <laughs> it's it. Tough. Tough out there. Why don't we do some news, Dave? <laughs> yes. I think we better. All right. Mine. Go, go ahead. I'll go first. Do it. Why don't you go first then? I'll go first. Medical news today. Ooh. Medical news today. You know, in it's these times, we really need to keep up with the medical news. Right. And the terrible website is Medical News News Yesterday. <laughs> Old news today. <laughs> About medicine. Yes. Yeah. The second uh, best medical news in the business. Here's what would have helped you. <laughs> World's okayest news channel. <laughs> um, so we medical try for mediocrity. <laughs> Medical news today. Yeah, our new motto is. Eh. <laughs> okay, uh, the title of this story is "What to Know About a Fish Bone in the Throat." Oh, all right. What, what, do you, what else? It Great. seems pretty obvious to me, right? Yeah, I know what to know. <laughs> So it starts off with the, you know, typical kind of yeah, swallowing a fish bone is a common occurrence and people eat lots of fish and that is a problem. Yeah, it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, I got it. So right. must write 500 words. <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. 500 words about somebody with a fish bone in their throat. Mm -hmm. So, of course, they start with signs and symptoms. All right. Mm -hmm. 
So it's probably a very good sign, and they list them. They don't say this, but I'm adding this. It's probably a very good sign. If you're eating fish <laughs> and you have a big, sharp pain in your throat, you probably have swallowed a fish bone. I think yeah. you're done. Or the whole fish. Right. I think you're done. There's, only, right two there. way, there's only two <laughs> things that could have happened. <laughs> right. Right? Bone or you ate the whole thing. You know, <laughs> right. it's a yellow perch. and you got. <laughs> but apparently they had to list list out the um, symptoms, which is coughing, mm -hmm. a prickly or tingling sensation in the throat. <laughs> symptoms of a bone in your throat? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Pain when swallowing. Okay. Good yeah. There. That's yeah, true. that's true. Yeah. Difficulty swallowing. <laughs> it depends how big the bone is, I suppose. I think, I think you pretty much pain would cover that. But anyway, yeah. mm -hmm. a, feel, a feeling of fullness at the base of the neck. <laughs> I can feel a bone <laughs> right here. <laughs> now, I always have a fullness at the base of my neck. So yeah. <laughs> it does make me wonder. Yep. <laughs> um, a sharp pain where the bone has impacted the throat. That is a symptom. The symptom is the bone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, I went to the, I go to the doctor like with a with a knife stuck in my foot. <laughs> Doc, there's something wrong. There seems to be some pain right in my foot, right where the knife enters the flesh. I'm feeling this like uh, dull pain. There's a little bit of blood. Um, I, I I have lots of symptoms. I don't know what the problem is. It's right where the knife goes in, right right through my shoe. Now, medical news yesterday said it could have been a rusty nail. It could have been. The knife is still there. I'm not convinced that's the problem, though. Let me go down the symptom list some more with you. Uh, red sock. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody footprints. <laughs> These are the symptoms of a knife in your foot. There's, right. <laughs> yeah. Severe cursing. Yes. Inventing new words. Yes. <laughs> Running in circles going, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Creative, <laughs> creative driving techniques. <laughs> yes, yelling at your wife. Don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great article. It's good yeah. science. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to be a problem. doctor. Dave is the best. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> um, so that that concludes the list of potential signs <laughs> and symptoms of a bone. So what's the treatment? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, let me get down to that part. All right. All right. So here we go. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> Talking about uh, bones makes <laughs> me sad. It does. <laughs> okay. I miss you, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of editing. <laughs> okay, I'm right, you got this. You can okay. do this. <laughs> so ways to remove a bone. <laughs> Okay. You got this. You can do it. <laughs> Ways to remove a fishbone at home. Okay. All right. I'm, I've got it. I've got it. I'm back. No, you do. You're here. Holy crap. Okay. <laughs> Here's the list. Mm -hmm. Cough forcibly. <laughs> Or forcefully, I okay. guess is how it's pronounced. Mm -hmm. So cough forcefully. <laughs> Drink a small amount of vinegar. Oh, God. <laughs> to help break the bone down with the acid. <laughs> Drink acid. How long would you need to have the vinegar in your mouth to break that bone down? Like, what scenario? Like, I joke. Bah. <laughs> Your wife hands you a jar of vinegar. You're like, no, no. <laughs> just force it down. And just like, I mean, 
you would just like gig it would, just, it would come out your nose like there'd be oh. no way to like hold that in your mouth long enough how big is this bone <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> it must be tiny. I know, and you're drinking vinegar. You're drinking vinegar. Yep. That's Have you what drank it, vinegar? <laughs> I think at that point you've thrown the bone up. <laughs> yeah. Like like if it was vinegar as an epicac, I'd be like, all right, that makes sense. Yeah, right. Vinegar, mouthful of baking soda, you're good to go. Right. You know? <laughs> but yeah, to actually break down the bone with with vinegar as an acid, I thought was brilliant. Mm-hmm. I thought that was just right on. I wish I wrote this. Uh, drink soda. Burp, right? right? Sure. Yes. The gases it produces in the stomach can help you break down the bone. I believe that. Break it down, I don't believe, but maybe bring it up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Next one is drink one tablespoon of olive oil mm-hmm. to lubricate. Oh, so it and slides down. <laughs> you free the bone. <laughs> one tablespoon. It's very specific. <laughs> yes. I just exactly. imagine choking. Now, in my house, my wife buys the industrial size olive oil, mm. which is very hard. It's like it weighs like eight pounds, like a gallon <laughs> sized metal can. Yep. And the, the spout is like in the middle top. It's impossible to pour out evenly. But imagine you're choking, you got your tablespoon, and you're trying to pour this gallon, <laughs> eight pound jug, and just olive oil everywhere. It sounds great. That's Honey, what... it says one tablespoon. One tablespoon. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch the knife. I'm fixing the bone first. <laughs> okay. Next one is swallow a banana. <laughs> <laughs> it does not say that. It does. <laughs> I want to know the guy who figured that out. Honey, I've been trying everything. I drink acid. I drink soda. I tried coughing real hard. <laughs> well, have you tried eating a banana? Why the hell would I drink or eat a banana? Woman, just do it. <laughs> My grandma once told me. <laughs> there you go. Right. Three more. Three work. more. Three more There's ways. More? Three if the more. banana doesn't do it, it can't be done. <laughs> <laughs> um, take a large bite of peanut butter and bread. All right, that goes nice with the banana. That's actually you make yeah, I know. It, yeah, I know. It's another one of those, right? Yeah. Um, next is soak bread in water for a few seconds. Okay. And then swallow a large chunk. Uh, I'm just trying to basically shove it down your fi- your throat, like just exactly. Force it down with right. wet bread. And, the, and I'm the, forcing the, things. Wet bread's my my go to forcer. And the last one on the how to dislodge a bone from your throat is partially chew a large marshmallow and swallow it whole. Okay. (laughs) And that's it. There you go. All right. Well, you know, if nothing else, you had peanut butter, (laughs) banana sandwiches, a marshmallow. You've pickled your mouth with vinegar. It's perfect. That's perfect. I could have been a doctor, Dave. <laughs> yep. 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 Wow. Exactly. That, that's fantastic news. <laughs> Medical so, news today. I even, really, I, I had to spend some time on that site. <laughs> it's medical, but it's, wait, I thought it was medical news yesterday. No, that's, that's the sister site that doesn't do very well. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, clearly. Yeah. My news sure. isn't nearly as good as your news. That's wonderful. Oh, well, you know, who knows? I thought this was going to be a dud, and then we got to uh, a knife in the foot, and then it just went off the rails. <laughs> I think we was right on the rails. <laughs> it was a high-speed train to nowhere. <laughs> All right, what uh, do you this got? Is, this is from the citizen, citizentv.co.kenya. Hmm. I think Kenya. Mm-hmm. Uh, man drowns in fish pond while running away from cops over a face mask. Nice. So the, nice. The only fish related part of this is the <laughs> is the pond. Well, but no. I was trying to, yeah. So, so anyway, a middle aged man has drowned after falling into a fish pond while running from police officers who accosted him accosted him over a face mask. <laughs> you know, I kind of think about this face mask thing, Dave. Yes. <laughs> you have a choice: mm-hmm. run from the cops 
or just pull a face mask up for a few seconds. <laughs> and then when they walk away, you just pull it down. Right. <laughs> so if you run away from people, instead of wearing a face mask, you might have this coming. <laughs> <laughs> you might drown in a pond. Wait, if you run away from a man with a face mask, <laughs> you might be drowning in a pond. That's my redneck guy. My, that's that's good. <laughs> he might be a redneck joke. Might be a redneck Jeff joke. Foxworthy. Yeah, <laughs> try it. Uh, <laughs> witnesses say the deceased man was being chased by police af- officers in the Kumbai in K- Kib. I, why do I choose these stories? I don't know. Kumba in Kibwezi. Mukani, I I don't I can't even read one of these uh, county before the incident. The reported he, he reportedly managed to flee with the police uh, officers in his wake. Citizen Digital understands that the police chase turned tragic after the deceased man actually slipped in the pond where he drowned. Uh, they did not say what kind of fish were in the pond, which is unfortunate because that's important. It's a man-made pond. All right. Uh, yep. And this is the only just the latest. In instance of people running from cops because of face masks in Kenya since they've made it a law to wear a face mask. So this might be a good case study for why we should not make it a law to wear them. Right, because you because could drown in fish ponds. It, <clears throat> right. So anyone who's making a case like, I'm not going to wear a fish. I have a right. I'm not wearing a face cover. If they say, because I could drown in a fish pond, they are right. Yeah. I wonder if they checked for fishbone. So, can't argue with that. <clears throat> I wonder if they checked for fishbone in his throat. <laughs> turns out, <laughs> turns out uh, the autopsy did show that he didn't actually die of, die of drowning. He died of choking on a fishbone. There you go. Yeah, exactly. And they couldn't find any peanut butter, vinegar, bread, or uh, marshmallows anywhere around to help him. <laughs> there you go. That is a tragic <laughs> story. Yeah. The, the the most tragic part of that I think is middle aged man. <laughs> just just I know. Well just what's that mean? That, that means somebody like, who it, is like it could, it could be us. <laughs> and then, oh no, it's past me. I or you know, I'm past that. <laughs> it it is it is the oh. person that thinks, all right, maybe Dave's things on will, the way out, folks. <laughs> Maybe things will turn around. Maybe, you know, maybe if I do yeah. these things it's gonna work. And uh no. No, not in the cards. Mm-hmm. And the the worst thing is that, you know, there was a big effort to do something that would ultimately save the person's life, which ultimately did not. Right. So right. here's a question. Put this mask on. So, yeah. Are you ready for this, Clay? And and this kind of yeah, question is the kind of question you like, because I know your brain. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, you do. <laughs> so does that person count as a COVID-19 victim? Oh, do we count him on the death list? Like, yes. if they're saying, like, you know, 500 people died today of COVID-19, is the guy who ran from the cops because they're not wearing a mask, is that a side effect of the COVID virus? Ooh, I like to think he, it is, but probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I think technically, yes. That's a good question. It, it would be. I mean, it was yeah. certainly a result, because if we didn't have a pandemic, if there wasn't the... Mm-hmm need to protect everybody in a society and to do that this would not have happened so there you go well then but then yes he that is a new covid death um <laughs> less contagious than the rest i hope <laughs> so <laughs> that's the good news the other thing i've been seeing is like there's the, people online are posting like oh that's darwinism at work you know darwin Aww. would love that but he's a middle-aged guy right exactly but it's not because likely, if he's already middle aged, likely he's already spread his genes around, and therefore Darwin would say it's okay that he dies, right? Because the goal of of natural selection is like it, it's only a negative selecting factor if you don't get a chance to reproduce. If you already spread your genes around, then that factor doesn't, doesn't matter. What next, wow. Okay, so I matter. I'm completely immune yeah, to so if he was seven, if, if he was. Darwinism. Yeah, I'm completely immune to it. That's awesome. I didn't realize that. Yeah, so am I. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. I'm, I already did the job of making new humans. Yeah. Therefore, I can do all the stupid crap I want. <laughs> Hooray. I, li- I like Go that. Team. <laughs> Go team. Yeah. <laughs> We've already won. <laughs> all right. That's Fish in the News.
Oh boy, isn't it? <laughs> news, news, fish in the news. Everybody loves their fish in the news. Uh, and we're glad to see Dave Kellum back on the podcast. Dave Kellum was one of our founding, was the founding fish nerd before me, I think. Oh, we started together, but I'll give him some credit. He named the fish nerds. He bought the domain, stole it from the uh, aquarium industry. He said, screw you guys. I'm taking it. If you're, not smart enough to, you're not smart enough to buy a domain. I'm going to buy it for you. <laughs> so, Right on. Uh, yeah, do it. All right. So I want to talk about um, women and fishing. I was doing a little bit of reading. And right now, according to Let, Let's Go Fishing, uh, which is a, you know, the big industry standard website, uh, 67% of anglers are male. And 33% are female, but the females represent the largest growing segment of fishers. In your podcast, that's your target audience, right? Yeah, yeah, the Woman Angler and Adventure podcast. So uh, we've done a lot of work with RBFF, um, Recreational Boating and Fishing Foundation. They've got a program called Women Making Waves, Mm -hmm. where they're really trying to get, you know, more of a... 50-50 50-50 kind of balance as far as men and women in the fishing industry. And the problem is, so women are, you know, more women than ever are buying fishing licenses, but the problem becomes they're not uh, retaining them, so they're not buying them again the, the next year at such a good rate. So uh, the, the biggest problem that they've discovered is that women feel like they're not being represented in the fishing industry. So they don't see themselves in the catalogs and things like that. And so they're like, mm, you know, I don't really belong here or whatever. So that's one of the things I wanted to, to help with my podcast. So what, what I'm doing is featuring women who are getting out there doing awesome things, you know, not even necessarily professionally, just if they're, they're you know, passionate about the sport and they want to share about it on the show and then hopefully inspire other women to who hear that and that they're like, you know what, if she can do it, I can do it, like you mentioned earlier. Um, and that's just been kind of the goal of the show. So I've had a, a large variety of guests on. Um, I've even had someone from the Recreational Boating and Fishing Foundation talk about that whole Women Making Waves initiative. Uh, I've, I've had some famous people on, which has been really fun, like with my tie-in with the music industry. I had Terry Clark, a uh, country music singer from uh, Canada. I actually nice. interviewed her backstage at the Grand Ole Opry one night to talk about her passion for fishing. Isn't that the fun thing about podcasting? It, you got to go backstage, Grand Ole Opry. Like, the same thing happened to me. I got to go to the Boston Symphony and go backstage and interview an opera singer about fishing. Nice. Like yeah. I got to go to a life, huh? does. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. Go on. So, but in that, in that, the funnest thing about it is, like, you just never know who fishes and all kinds of people are doing it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then another yeah. one I just locked in. So hopefully it happens. But Brittany Howard, lead singer from Alabama Shakes. Woo! Nice. Yeah. Yes. She's big into fly fishing. And so uh, we're supposed to do an interview with her here in the next week. So that's going to be awesome. Well, there you go. So yeah. congratulations, by the way. That's amazing that you're reaching that many people and getting people on. And and these female artists are going to be excited about it because you are in a niche that no one else is really digging in on. Right. Um, I've been for years. I, I, I have two daughters and I was taught to fish by my mother, my stepmother, taught to fillet fish by my stepmother. Um, and so for me, it's not strange or odd for women to fish. In my world, that's the norm. Mm-hmm. Um, my daughter Zoe, my oldest, is my co-captain on the boat. When we go on fishing charters, I don't touch bait. I don't tie knots. I don't unhook fish. Um, it, it, whether I'm on the ice or on the boat, she just does all the work. Nice. Um, and to her, that's the normal thing for, it does not strange for her to be a girl and do that. She did tell me though, because she is aware of her world. She said, dad, when I'm 18, I'm getting my, my uh, guide license and I'm going to be a fly fishing guide this, and I'm going to make a ton of money. <laughs> and she's not wrong. She goes, and she goes, also, I'm going to be competent. So <laughs> yeah, she is amazing. amazing. Well, and so, yeah, there are those women out there that, that, you know, I've heard of women that said, you know, I learned to fish from my grandmother and things like that. But when you do look at the industry, um, 
professional bass fishing for for instance we don't have any women that fish the bass master classic you know old boys club that one yeah Yeah. and um you know there's a couple women out there making a serious go at it which is awesome and i I hope they succeed but um one of the ladies we had on the show not too long ago her name's anastasia patterson and she's yeah trying, trying to get into the professional scene and one of the stories she told on the show was um she just had i don't know i think it was when she was still in high school but somebody just randomly said oh you'll never you'll never be able to make it in professional fishing because you're a woman or whatever really? and and um that really like kind of sat it, with her well you know? yeah um well, that, even though he wasn't like a, a consequential person in her life but just that comment you know well it is and, it, and these are subtle aggressions really they really they really add up over time the strange thing for me with it is you know i can get it like you know football basketball some sports where men are just physically just naturally bigger than women i can see why you might separate mm-hmm. bass fishing or fishing the fish don't know who's holding the fishing rod <laughs> It doesn't. In, in fact, in my experience, women are better anglers than men because they pay attention. They got better. There's something else about, like anyone I fish with, always fishes better than I do. They're just more in touch with the world around them somehow. Um, so the fact that like women aren't in these industries is bizarre because there's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing better about a man in this. There's no stronger. There's no, it doesn't matter how strong you are. I've heard. You are. I've heard it described, you know, fishing, especially like in high school, you know, so high school fishing starting to take off because you don't have to have this physical build, you know, to, to participate in fishing like you might football or mm-hmm. basketball. So I've heard it described as the great equalizer. Um, Should be. But I think where the issue comes in, uh, and I've heard it time and time again, we've had uh, the president from the LBA, the ladies Bass uh, Anglers Association on the show that they do a few tournaments a year. That's kind of the ladies professional bass, you know, fishing level. But the issue is so women having children, they can't really just leave the home and travel. And, you know, it's a lot of work being away from home. These anglers that that fish the classic they're gone a lot they're practicing it's a huge time it's a it's a lifestyle really and so if you want to have a family it makes it a lot more challenging if you're a woman to be able to to just leave the home and go do that i guess so that's kind of the theme i've heard uh a lot well that's interesting that's interesting um you know everybody's going to have their limitations i suppose i mean everybody wants to fish more than they can get out and do just because they got to earn a a real living somewhere Mm -hmm. um but i i want to jump back to anastasia real quick because um this is what really got me just completely stoked about your podcast because you just have these amazing people on and uh i was actually um I'd been following on on ice on Instagram for quite mm-hmm. a while. And so I'd seen, she'd been on your show. And part of my research is I, I went and listened to this and I got hooked. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had to, um, but Anastasia is African-American, correct? Right. Yes. And uh, her mom, she's out of South Carolina, I do believe. So Florida? North Carolina or South North Carolina. Carolina. Okay. One of the yeah. Carolinas. Yeah. And her mom is the sheriff in mm-hmm. the town. So, she comes from that sort of uh, strong female model, yep. um, and she s- did say that that between this antagonist and then looking at her mom, um, you know, the theme of your show, you can do this. You know, mm-hmm. you have on so many great ladies that have had some person um, try to throw a stumbling block in their path and rise above anyway as soon as i got done listening i i started following anastasia because awesome. i just think that's absolutely actually I, I end up following uh m- most of your guests uh if they have a feed um but um and uh plotting to uh steal as many of them down the road <laughs> as possible because Go you're on fish- well yes. we're you know we're uh, this is why i wanted to have you because when i first joined fish nerds as a correspondent clay's like we're all about diversity um and frankly, um, I'm all for it because there are so many groups that are underrepresented. Um, everybody wants to interview the pro bass guy. Everybody wants to interview the the YouTuber, and they all tend to be 
man, um, um, I just don't want to go through the please, 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 oh, please, you know, to get somebody on the show when I can get somebody that's, you know, super stoked, super excited, and and just uh, breaking new ground. It just right. really, really is awesome. So, um, yeah. I don't have any more questions about the podcast, but people can find your, what's your website? Uh, so really easy. Just the woman angler.com is the website. Mm -hmm. And then like Facebook is at the woman angler, uh, same thing on Instagram. And then the cool thing, we've got a, a Facebook group. Um, and that's, I think really special cause that's a private group. People can ask to join and then you can communicate with other people that listen to the show. And it's kind of more of a private setting. So if, if you have a question that you might be embarrassed to ask or whatever, it, people seem to be a little bit more comfortable in in that community. Yeah, Facebook groups uh, over we have we we have fish nerds have like fourteen thousand on our page. We have a group with almost a thousand in it, and the thousand in the group are where is where the audience engagement is. That's mm -hmm. where people build the community, and it's pretty great. So congratulations, that's it's so much fun. Yeah, so much fun, John. You were talking about some kind of quiz tonight. Yeah, we're going to have a little quiz here. You guys are going to, you two, the big uh, outdoor pontoon capitanos. We're uh, like twins. Yeah, you are like <laughs> twins. You are, you are separated somehow uh, in the mystic. Um, so I am going to pitch you head to head. Uh, let me put my eyeballs on here so I can see this. And uh, we're going to have a quiz. And uh, Angie, when you want to, we don't have the, the buzzer thing and, and we can't do all the live sounds like our friend, Paul Chomo, Clay has the machine. He hasn't learned to use it yet. Um, but I don't blame him because, uh, I'm technology. Uh, Angie, uh, I've had this mixer on my desk for seven years. I don't even know how to plug it in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so. Good Instead job. of we can't we can't do the buzz tone and we can't do that. You're gonna have to do your own. So when Angie wants to buzz in, she can say me 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 or I know or whatever. And when Clay wants to buzz in, he yeah. has to honk. Clay has to honk like a goose. Okay. <laughs> and, and what I'll uh, do is afterwards I'll edit real audio and I'll, I'll change it. <laughs> there you go. Uh, all righty. So here we're gonna go round one. Captains in history. And I'm going to start oh off. We can, if you, you get bonus points, if you can answer before the multiple choice. Um, but if oh. you need the multiple choice, then we will give you choices. We're, Either one. I think we're both screwed. This is be. Okay. Now here, here we go. Question one. Who was captain of the Pequod? Honk, honk, honk. Oh, really? Clay Grove. Uh, uh, Ishmael. Uh, no. he, he, he was the writer of the story. Well, I don't know. Was it Captain that Bly? Was Dick. No, yes. no, no. That was the quarry of the story. He's got the right book. Captain Bly, Captain Smith, or Captain Ahab. Oh, honk, honk, honk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ahab. You Ahab don't, is You correct. don't get two chances at oh, that. Oh, uh, we you should buzz <laughs> it in. should go to me and yeah, I'll, I'll just blindly it. guess. Uh, I didn't make a guess. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. What do you think, Angie? <laughs> uh, no, he, he, he got it. Uh, Clay gets it for three points, okay? Now, uh, most powerful woman military captain in history, was it the pirate Grace O'Malley? Was it the pirate Shang Yi Sal? Or was it Legatha the Viking? Mm. I'm going to take a guess. Okay, do it. I'm just going to go with... A. A. Grace O'Malley was not the most powerful it woman just sounded military like captain. A name in history. That sounded familiar. Well, it's Can awesome. She was an Irish pirate and she had about 20 ships under her command and she was fierce as heck. <laughs> Got a guess, Clay? Never heard it. I never heard it. It's well, either between Chang, Chang Yi Sal or Legatha, the Viking. My second guess Go ahead. would be the uh, Vikings. Always Vikings. Because. Yeah. I'm from Minnesota. Skull Vikings. <laughs> um, uh, no points for anybody. Legatha oh. was, it was second. She had about 100, <laughs> 120 ships, uh, about five to 10,000 men. But Chang Yi Sal had over 200 ships and 50,000 men in her command. So wow. she, uh, she was scary and took on uh, the fleets of entire countries. If I could go back in time, I'd have her on the podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. I bet last she's a terrible one. guest. 
Yeah. <laughs> One Colorful. word answers. <laughs> <laughs> no stories. Well, you know, the thing is, she was a uh, 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 feminist uh, before her time. She had a very disciplined fleet. And, uh, for example, the rape of female prisoners was uh, punishable by beheading. Um, if she caught, caught you deserting, uh, she just cut But she was okay off. with raping male prisoners? I uh, I don't know. Uh, probably, maybe not. I don't know. I know if you deserted, uh, you got ears cut off. So, um, it well, you know she she was great. she wasn't a softy. She wasn't a pushover. Okay, last one on on about uh, pirates and and captains and such. The only U.S. lady pirate was Anne Bonny, Rachel Wall, or Mary Reed. Anybody? Uh, no clue. All right. No points. It was Rachel Wall. Okay. Now we're going to go. Maybe I made this I'm too useless. hard. <laughs> no, no, it's perfect. I'm all right. All right. All right. Now we're going to move on to pioneers in fly fishing. Oh, um, man. Oh, Christ. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here we go. I can name two fly fishers oh. ever. <laughs> exactly. Well. Maybe Elsie. only one. Now I think about it. <laughs> Elsie Bivens Darby was a fly tying pioneer from the 30s to the late 70s. Uh, she was famous for using odd hook size numbers, which I didn't even know such things exist. You know, all my hook sizes are 246. Uh, she was famous for tying with a number 13 um, hook. She was one of the first people to use a lot of deer hair in her fly tying. Elsie uh, Bivens Darby was located in what mountain range? The Catskills, the Adirondacks, or the Alleghenies? Take a guess. Honk, if honk, honk. Yes. Honk, 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 yes. honk, 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 uh, Say them again. The cat <laughs> say skills. Say them again. The cat skills. Cat skills. Cat, cat skills. skills is correct. That's for... what I was going to yes. guess. Ah, that was only a guess, too. Oh. Yeah, I, that's <laughs> fine. A guess, guess, guess. Don't be shy now, <laughs> Angie. Uh, Clay gets that one for one and a half points. Okay, now. Oh, um, Otis. The, the ghost might be the most famous Atlantic salmon fly in history. What Mary, mm, what famous ghost. woman named Mary tied the ghost? Was it Mary Cahill? Was it Mary Tyler Moore? Or was it Mary Marbury? Mm. I'm going to take a guess. All right, do it. I'm, I'm going to go with A. Mary Cahill is not correct. <sighs> Was it? But you can guess again. That is okay. Was it Mary Tyler Moore or Mary Orvis Marbury? Oh, Orvis. <laughs> she, uh, and, right. And Angie gets it for two million points. All right. Amazing. Did you How say did you that the it? first time? And I just no, I threw, it. threw, oh, threw okay. a little hint, hint in there. <laughs> okay, I was like, I, I didn't hear hintster. that the first time because that's what I would have went with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got well, at least you didn't go with Tyler Moore. I've got some safety. Depth well, I was like, she's from Minnesota, and I don't think that she would be into fly fishing, but I could be wrong. Was she really from Minnesota, or is that just on the show? Well, well, I know, like, well, they have a house for dedicated, oh. like, it's some kind of famous house you can go to her there. So fantastic, fantastic. All right. Last one in pioneers in fly fishing. Lady pioneers. Here we go. Joan Salvato was a famous fly fisher before she met her husband. Together, they defined fly fishing in the mid to late 20th century. Who was her husband? Was it Charles Orvis? Was it Lee Wolf? Was it A.K. Best? Joan Salvato. Orvis seems too obvious. So is point. it Lee Wolf or A.K. Best? Lee Wolf sounds kind of familiar. Lee Wolf is correct yes! for four and a half million points. <laughs> Angie gets it. She is Joan <laughs> Salvato Wolf, and she. Uh, uh, Lee, of course, I know that name. Along. Yeah, yes, I've heard that yes. name. Yes, yeah, she uh, is is very influential in fly tying mm -hmm. and in. Um, all like my fly, all my fly angler friends that I've had on the show are listening, like shaking their heads right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, she was she actually uh, won competitions against men on distance fly casting and accuracy fly casting, and helped develop different fly patterns and so on. Um, she was an essential part of of Lee Wolf's um, acceleration. They kind of uh, you know both of them 
were famous to begin with in one way, but boy, when they got together, it was the, the sky was the limit. Okay. Now the last part of the quiz is this. We are, what do y'all know about each other's states? Here we go. Clay Groves, oh, you're oh, first. Oh God. <laughs> Tell me what TVA stands for. What does TVA stand for? First of all, what state is Angie from? Tennessee. Okay. So we're, we're, well, we're Minnesota. Uh, but, but no, but Tennessee. right now she's out of Nashville, Tennessee. So, right. just, so you just, I got to make sure you're, you're on the map. All right. TVA stands for what? Uh, tele, the Tennessee Virgin Association. <laughs> You've got two of those, right? It stands for Tennessee Valley Authority. So we will give you, you only got five, one, right? Point five points. Okay. I got only one out of three there. So. I said Tennessee and that was it. Yeah. I got the Tennessee part. I barely got that. <laughs> well, we got to give you something. All right, here we go. The skipjack herring is a bait fish and a game fish. Who are you asking this to? You. You're, this is your section. You've got to answer all oh. these questions about. Oh, there's more than one? Oh, yeah. This is a I was going to retire a, a partial winner. A partial champion? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, 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 no. You, 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 uh, <laughs> we're going to see how well you know the Tennessee scene. Here we go. All right. I know a lot. Skipjack herring. Elvis has a nickname it's a game fish it's a sport fish it's one i gotta get on my butt on my list of species caught i'm dying to get down south and catch one what's the nickname for skipjack herring what's another name i i i can i watch a bunch of youtube videos of people catch these out of kayaks and they weren't calling them skipjacks they were calling them something else i had to google it to find out it was a skipjack and i forgot what i googled to get back there. I, I remember the real name and forgot the fake name. Clue. They so jump a lot. Give me, give me a clue. They jump a lot, and they're named after a famous jumping saltwater fish that begins with T. So Tennessee blank. I got nothing, John. Tennessee. Ten Tennessee tarpon, baby. Tennessee, Tennessee tarpon. Tennessee Everybody got tarpon. Was, no. That was a good hint. Yeah. It yeah, uh, didn't help me. Didn't help, didn't help at all. <laughs> all right. Tennessee, nickname, the mountain state, music land, or the volunteer state, Clay? Music land. Wrong. Volunteer Vol state, mountain state. Volunteer state. So we'll give you another half a point. That is correct. I don't should get any. I, I went through the whole list. I said every answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you said volunteer state second so we're gonna give you and half a point so now you have <laughs> you said it second for I, I think you're biasing your answers uh, in my favor um well I, you know I, it's not that i don't love watching you get the hell beat out of you by a woman but i do want to keep this interesting for the listeners um <laughs> all, right. all right so the playwright tennessee williams was born in what part of tennessee east or west I, I can't I, I think if you gave me a map, I couldn't find Tennessee. So <laughs> I'm gonna say west, east. He was not born not in Tennessee east. at all. That his real name was <laughs> Thomas Lanier Williams the third. He was born in Columbus, Mississippi and lived uh, went to school in Missouri and lived in St. Louis. Um if you can name a play by Tennessee Trick Williams, question. I'll give you three points. Annie Oakley. Annie Gitch Gun. Uh, uh no. Marlon Brando. Stella, Stella, streetcar named Desire. All right, for three points. And Did finally, that really? Did I? <laughs> you got it. You got it. Okay, now spell. All right, last one. Spell Tennessee. T e n n e s s e e. They got it for three more points. Ooh, Fantastic. Really? Fantastic. Yeah, Holy yeah. Smokes. Yeah. All right. So all right. Is, Angie, is, uh, now like what? Nine what points, do you do? And Angie has six million points. Um, but we're <laughs> going to we're going to go on here. And uh, what we'll do to make it fair is I'll subtract one half point for every wrong answer, Angie. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So here we go, Angie. How much do you know about New Hampshire? Question number one: Silver Lake, Madison. You would love it. Is the fishing there is great, good, average, or terrible. <laughs> I'm going to go with terrible. 
terrible is correct for four million points in fact there's a local hashtag suck it at silver lake and i i only know that because the last episode of fish nerds i listened to <laughs> all right <laughs> it's, yeah. it, 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 that's it's, a that's a bonus of two million more points. Two million. Angie, the funniest thing is I talk about constantly how bad the fishing is on that lake, and people still pay me to bring them out there to go fishing. <laughs> like, I never stop talking about how terrible it is. And the New York Times came up and did a full-page story on fishing with me on that lake. And the <laughs> day they came up, we caught fish, though. I don't know how that happened. So now <laughs> you're, yeah, now you're in trouble. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, it's the challenge. It's the challenge, mm -hmm. baby. And I've no, been there. It's convenience. It's it's beautiful lake. You can't not love Silver Lake. It lives up to its name. I got to go there. I'm dying to get back. And we did catch fish. We did have a blast. Um, so, And one of the things about Silver Lake, it is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And you can see the mountains. Uh, Clay lives in the... Uh, uh, the White Mountains there are just nearby there. From Silver Lake, you can see the second most photographed mountain in the USA. Is it Mount Shakura, Mount Washington, or Cannon Mountain? I'm going to go with uh, Mount Jakura, or however you said that. Ding, 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 ding. Yes, for six million more points, that is correct. <laughs> Mount Jakura. All righty. And I know that from your podcast. Wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. God, she's smarter than both of us put together. Clay, this is pathetic. I, I can't even remember I know. Uh, I do. my own phone number. I, this is awful. <laughs> I would question any fact you hear on the Fish Nerds podcast. Just <laughs> Isn't that yeah. in your slogan? <laughs> mostly true. Yeah, yep. that's right. Mostly true. <laughs> All right. The New Hampshire motto is live free or dry. Meh, whatever. Let's just smoke weed or to the stars through effort. <laughs> um, I don't. I'm going to go with one. Live free. Live free, free or die yeah. is correct for another 7 million points. Man, whatever. Let's Interestingly, smoke weed. John. What? <laughs> interest, interestingly, John, the man, whatever, let's smoke weed is the Maine. state motto of every state around us. <laughs> Maine, <laughs> Vermont, and Mass have all and legalized mass. weed, but the live free or die state is like, no, cold dead hands. No, no. we must not smoke weed. Not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. And of yeah. course, to the stars through effort is kansas okay here we go oh, what right. is a leaf peeper is it a frog is it an insect is it a person what is a leaf peeper <laughs> a person <laughs> um a person is correct what for real it, yes yeah. it is correct i came up there in october to s fulfill an invite from my buddy clay and i get to conway and i uh, and of course, my wife will tell you how grumpy I can get uh, to the point uh, where I'm surprised I'm still alive. Um, the uh, I, I am in a traffic jam that would do. I've I've driven into Manhattan, New York twice, and this made that look easy. Okay? Really? Because the fall foliage there is, if it's ah. second to anything, and these people are all up there to see it, and. Uh, our good buddy Rich Collins is like, where are you? He wanted to get out, get some fishing done. I told him I'd be there. I was running late already, and I was an even an hour more late because I'm trying to drive around Conway and follow his directions. And leaf peepers everywhere. <laughs> I mean, I, on my way up, every little body of water, every little turnout has like seven, eight cars in it, have people with cameras and all this stuff. Um, and yeah, when I came down the down into the Mount Washington Valley. It was, um, yeah, it was great. Um, it's pretty. All right. all right, last question. Uh -huh. You'll probably get this one pretty easy, um, but I'm going to go with it anyway. What is a slime dart? Do you need choices? Slime dart? What is a slime dart? Is it like a... It's a type of fish. Okay. Is it a shiner minnow? Is it a fall fish? Is it a pickerel? Uh, a shiner minnow? Not a shiner minnow. Ah. I'm sorry. We're going to have to subtract. I thought I was going to get 100% there. Oh, it was so close, so <laughs> close. If uh, you can name. You're a disappointment. <laughs> we, we're going to have to take a half a point away. So of your 13 million <laughs> points, you're down to 12,999,000.5 points. But you can gain it back plus another 10 million extra points if. You can tell me which of these is not a nickname for a burbot. 
which is a type of fish that Clay likes to catch and I, I long to catch. Which is not a nickname? Which is not. And, of course, being from Minnesota, you know exactly what a burbot is. So here we go. The, but you one should. of these is fake. One of these is not a nickname for burbot. Is it Mariah, Cusk, Lawyer, or Lola? I've not heard of any of those. Um, but I'm going to go with Lola. Lola is correct. She gets yes. back her half point and 10 million <laughs> extra points. Woo. So Clay has nine points. Angie has almost 20 million points. <laughs> and so Angie is our winner tonight. Thank you for participating Woo. in Crappie Hippie's first oh, podcast quiz. Ooh, I'll be able to sleep tonight now. <laughs> oh, man, the fix is in. The fix is in. All right, Angie, thank you so much for coming to the podcast. So that's it. You've listened to a bunch of fish nerds when you should have been fishing. And you should have been. Special thanks to Angie Scott, host of the Woman Angler and Adventure podcast. Wally Pleasant for making our theme music. Diane's Bath Salts for making our news theme. Thanks to Crappy Hippie for the worst quiz I've ever taken because I lost. And, of course, thanks to Dave Kellum for uh, making the news for us today. <laughs> so until next time, follow the code of the fish nerds. Spawn early and often. Never trust a free lunch with strings attached. And swim against the current every chance you get. You did it, Angie. You made a hey. podcast. Congratulations. <laughs> Whether you're fly fishing in a stream, getting those ankles wet, or deep in the ocean casting nets, fish nerds. Fish nerds. Fish nerds. It's a podcast. Just for the hell of it. Fry it in a basket or broiled in a pan. Eat it raw like you're in Siam. Fish nerds. Fish nerds. Fish nerds. It's a podcast.